Okay, now we're talking about the rights of the child. Now this is an area that I feel very passionate about. But many people, when we start talking about the rights of the child, it comes back to this basic concept of what are we talking about when we refer to a child. Now, a child, according to Article 1 of the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, says, it's every human being who's below the age of 18. Now, whenever we begin a discussion or discourse on child rights, this is the effect in the audience. This is what happens. Controversy is created, defensive attitudes are created, and they are usually cultural, relativist arguments. Now, let me explain these things to you. If I say that I disagree with parents' rights to beat their children, that's my view. If I say that children have the right to speak their mind, they have the right to voice their own concerns, they have their right to articulate their points of view. If I say that if you have been hit by a parent, you have been abused by your parent. The side effect of that is people begin to attack, or I'm questioning your traditional practices. I'm asking you to question the activities of the persons who brought you up, your parent. And many people get very defensive when they say beating is bad because the automatic response is, I was beaten and look at me. I turned out fine, I'm in low. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that actually goes against your argument that you turned out fine. <laughs> now, this point of cultural relativity, that, that is a jurisprudential theory that says any barbaric practice can be justified on the basis of cultural relativity. That means you can't comment about my cultural practices because this is unique to my culture. That argument, that particular jurisprudential theory has been allowed to justify things like FGM, female genital mutilation of children. Forced virginity testing on young girls. That argument allows people to circumvent an argument of human rights violations against children, arguing that what we are doing is not a human rights violation, but a traditional cultural practice. That is why I totally disregard anyone who seeks to argue against any human rights violation, particularly child rights violation, on the basis of cultural relativity. My question is why? Why are we so opposed to standing up for the rights of children or articulating our views on children in a modern concept. It stems from the fact that people do not understand the construct of a child. Now I have had issues with certain definitions of childhood. So Article 1 of the Convention on the Rights of the Child labels a child anyone below the age of 18. Yet they say in Article 38 you need to be 15 to go to war. So the Convention on the Rights of the Child says that you can go to war because before you can become adult, an adult. You can go to war at 15, but you don't become an adult until 18. Our Sex and Offenses Act says that anyone below the age of 12 cannot be charged under the Sexual Offenses legislation. So I can think the rationale may have been that maybe persons who are alleged to have committed offenses under the Sexual Offenses Act must be adults biologically. But there are offenses under our Sexual Offenses Act, such as the fear of the sexual indecency offenses, which do not require sexual maturation. The effect of that therefore means that having in an age limit which exculpates children from liability, in my view, is wrong. So yes, I am arguing that if children should be treated in a particular way, they should also be given the responsibility of their actions. Now we have the Children's Act, and let's not even get to that Children's Act. And they pick up numbers, I don't know where they get the ages from. <laughs> so you are a young person if you are between the ages of 14 and 16. You are a child if you are below the age, I think it's below the age of 14. Some places give you age of 8, some tell you 7 depending on the amendment. Other places tell you that depending on your age and the type of offence you're charged with, you will actually go to a, an industrial school versus jail or an orphanage depending on the magistrate. Everything is discretionary and I don't know the basis of these ages. What is the rationale? What is our construct of childhood? What are we thinking of when we think about the child? 
Now, let, let's deal with these two points. Let's come focus mainly on the purpose of this presentation. The first point is a child must never be beaten. That's my first assertion. And the second assertion is parents have no inherent right to smack their children. I am saying parents do not have a right to hit their children. Anyone agree with that? I expect you to know. Now let me give you some, some examples and you tell me what you think about it. A man is walking down, the woman with his wife, and she wants to go shopping, he gives her a hard slap in her face. Anything wrong with that? Yeah. Why? Brilliant argument. Well, let's, leave, let's stick with that one. Church goers, Bible samples, pass a place in Kirap and see individuals dressed in a unique way. <laughs> so what they do is they pull out the gun and shoot them. So they shoot persons of who have a different sexual orientation because of their beliefs. Anything is wrong with that? It's contradictory to the whole Bible shooting thing. I'm stamping out God and Solomon more. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm stamping it out. But God is Okay, okay, good. <laughs> now, in each of these situations, we have legislation. We have a DP Act allowing women to bring an action against their husband or their cohabitant spouses. Mm -hmm. If, in fact, the cohabitant spouse is engaging in any form of violence, they can articulate the abuse being meted out against them. The same thing. Any minority group, and I'm using this term minority, not in relation to numerical figures, but in relation to persons who are not mainstream. Any minority has the ability to speak on behalf of themselves when they are being abused. Children do not have that right. Children need to ask the abusers to articulate the abuse for them. That's not happening. So there is a disconnect in this one category of minority where the abuser or the abused cannot articulate his abuse. He is voiceless in the abuse. It's further exacerbated that we have laws in every single area of our society that tells us when a child can do what. Now, you tell me, if our age of majority says, even the United Nations Convention 18, what happens on the night of our 17th, of our 18th birthday? What happens on the last night of our 17th? What happens that suddenly makes us 18 and now we're an adult? What happens that ushering into our 18th year of life makes us no longer a child? That is the arbitrariness of the figures. And the same way that we must protect the vulnerable in society, I dare say that children reflect the most vulnerable group in society.